I'll deal with that when I deal with that. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NZ Pocket Guides live session. <laughs> We're here to help you answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the experts of traveling in New Zealand. Are we, Laura? Yes, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is the beautiful sign that Robin is holding. But it's also a website with thousands of articles to help you plan your trip to New Zealand. Of course, when you are able to come to New Zealand, but it's never too early to start planning. That way you can make the most of your trip of a lifetime to um, Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, but yeah, on the website, we cover all sorts of travel from family, luxury, budget, and um, even honeymoons is covered and foodie exploration as well. All that good stuff is covered on nzpocketguide.com. So it's usually the best place to get your questions answered for your trip to New Zealand. But if you're not really into reading, that is what this live Q&A session is for right now, which we do every old live sessions are in your time zone so that's a good way to make sure that you don't miss a single one but another good way to make sure you don't miss anything is when you subscribe click on the little bell notification icon and that way you'll get a notification when we go live um so throughout the week we take questions that you guys have asked um, in the comments section of any of our youtube videos we also run through some of those questions but the best place to come and get your questions answered is right now on the live chat, so ask away. Here you go. Also, by the way, today is International Nothing Day. I don't know if you are aware, but... To celebrate all the nothings. Yeah, it's the day about doing nothing. It has been celebrated since 1973, and you're wow. supposed to do absolutely nothing today. Okay, so well, let's this is switch be a this boring, off. <laughs> this is going to be a boring live session. We're going to sit here in silence yeah, and do absolutely do nothing. nothing. We may die within about three minutes, I guess, since you can't even breathe, I guess. Oh, yeah, nothing, or, you know, that, yeah, nothing is quite a, a yeah, broad I know, uh, concept. I know. So, yeah, yeah, you can do absolutely nothing. All okay. right, guys. So, uh, Mahmoud uh, Altaya Nayeb uh, says, hello. How are you doing, Mahmoud? Um, I hope you're staying safe where you are. Uh, in the meantime, a couple of news that happened today. So New Zealand has announced that there is about 1,000 students that can come to New Zealand um, if to, you know, to complete their studies. Uh, we did a separate video about that, about the announcement, uh, because you guys messaged us, messaged us in droves. And we want to make sure that we cover that topic. So the video is live on the channel right now. And um, there has been the first step of an agreement between New Zealand and the Cook Islands, meaning that people from the Cook Islands can come to New Zealand quarantine-free. So that's the first stage of the travel bubble for New Zealand. That doesn't mean like New Zealanders can go to the Cook Islands. It doesn't work two ways just yet. But uh, that's the first stage of that agreement. So there is some... Um, some progress basically into uh, New Zealand travel bubbles and maybe traveling to New Zealand uh, is going to be a thing uh, again soon. So here you go. Uh, Frank Wander says hi and Anthony Comstock says Morena from California, USA. If you guys don't know what that means, Morena means uh, good morning in Maori, which is the local indigenous language. Uh, Frank Wander says, I'm scared because I just realized I have tiny mushrooms growing between my toes. It is Sunday, though, so should I go to the emergency room? Yes, run away. Run to the emergency room. <laughs> run and see what they say. Uh, Moshin says, Kia ora from Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, that's awesome. Kia ora. Kia ora. And Mohan Diva says, hi. Hi. How are you doing, Mohan? All right, so while you guys are getting warmed up with some questions about traveling in New Zealand, not about mushrooms, we're going to go over some questions that we received throughout the week. And, oh, before that, we're going to say hi to Martina Sten, which is in northern Germany. She's hi. coming every week now. <laughs> it's glad to have Martina yes, on board. Yes, we do like our regulars. <laughs> yes, and she even gave us an, uh, an icon. I like that. <laughs> cool. All right, so a quick question that we received throughout the week, and then we'll get back to live chat and keep on answering every question you guys have. All right, so we got a question on YouTube from... R.Y. George saying, Hi, Laura, Laura and Robin. I have a question for you two. Is it easy to find gluten-free food in New Zealand? I have celiac disease and I'm planning a two-week trip there with my fiancé. Thank you so much for all the help on your website. It's fantastic. 
I do like the nice words. Yeah. That is, that is nice. <laughs> All right. So uh, obviously gluten-free is uh, is a big topic uh, since, you know, many years now. It yeah. has been, it's both a food trend and uh, a rampant disease. So mm -hmm. there is there is kind of a big separation between uh, between two, right? Um, there are people which are trying to uh, eat gluten-free just for some diet purposes and, and, and just to follow that, that current food trend. And there are some people which are actually affected by a disease called celiac disease, which, you know, uh, forbid them to process. The, the protein inside gluten um, so we we will make a big difference between uh, you know in this video uh, just to give you some separate tips because um you know you can make compromises when you just are following a food trend not that you know it's not a valid food trend to follow it's just you you are able to make some compromises while when you actually have a disease it's kind of a no-go yeah so laura is it easy to eat out with celiac disease in new zealand um yeah it is actually really easy to eat out if you do have uh, celiac disease in new zealand and um, because because gluten-free uh, food is quite a it's been a very popular trend in New Zealand for quite a few years now so pretty much any menu in any restaurant you will find gluten-free options and they'll be clearly marked GF um, on the menu so you do often have um, plenty of options but when you are ordering at a restaurant or takeaway cafe any place where you go and buy food um, it is quite important to just make it really obvious to whoever is waiting on you um, that you do have celiac disease and it isn't just, you know, you're not just following the gluten-free trend. And the reason for that is... Um, some Laura's going to share a bit of a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, well... Yeah, so the reason for that is like um, when I first arrived in New Zealand and I I worked in, um, you know, in cafes and stuff like that. And I saw that in the kitchen, um, the uh, kitchen staff would usually ask, do they actually have celiac disease or is it just gluten free? Because the reason they want to ask is because they want to cook corners and basically not, you know, clean up properly after themselves and make sure there's no gluten getting into the food if it is just the gluten-free trend. Because when they do have to prepare a gluten-free meal, they do have to clean the whole station yes, in they order need to, to make sure there's no cross-contamination. Exactly. So they, so, But if if you do um, actually specify that you do have celiac disease, they'll make an extra effort to make sure that there is no gluten getting into your food. And, you know, they basically will do a good job of it. So, um, so yeah, that's just a tip for you when you are ordering out in New Zealand. You do have celiac disease make sure that you do specify that you do have celiac disease to make sure they do a good job now when you're cooking for yourself uh, let's say you're staying in campsite or, or even if you have your own camper van is it easy to find gluten-free food in supermarkets in new zealand yeah absolutely and um, everything that is gluten-free that's sold in supermarkets is usually really clearly labeled that it is gluten-free so you're not usually having to look too hard at the packaging but they also have special sections of um into the supermarkets which just so you just so it's obvious what the main supermarkets are in New Zealand. There's New World, Countdown, Pack and Save. And then on the South Island, you have more Fresh Choice um, is another one as well. Um, so yeah, in those larger supermarkets, they usually have sections which are for like special dietary requirements section. I'm, I'm not sure what the official... Um, official label for that section is but it is usually um really easy to find in the supermarket and they do have special um you know gluten-free foods there so that's easy enough to find but if you are um staying maybe in a smaller town or a village where there's only a convenience store then or a dairy shop or a dairy shop because in new zealand they call convenience stores dairies just so you know um and yeah if you're in a dairy you'll probably have less options there may be a few options but by that point, it's usually a good idea to, you know, know what type of foods are, um, you, you know, you'll probably uh, recognize brands as you're going around um, the country. And yeah, in, in the convenience stores or the dairies, you'll probably know what you can have at that point, or you'll probably just have a little bit less options and you'll probably have to be a little, a little more picky in convenience stores. But it's usually, if you are traveling around, it's usually a good idea to stock up in the larger supermarkets when you're in the larger towns. And then you'll, you know, you can carry your food around from there. And uh, some example of convenience store chains in New Zealand, as Jordan is pointing right now in the live chat, is Foursquare. So that's mm. the, probably the largest kind of chain of uh, convenience stores in New yeah. Zealand. And in the South Island, there's another one called uh, Night and Day or yes. Day and Night. Not sure which way around it is. <laughs> Night and Day, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, last tip for you when traveling in New Zealand with select this is I will actually have a, a small kind of printout or save it on my phone. I will uh, save a, a bunch of uh, recipes which are easy to make with everyday ingredients just in case you are stuck in much smaller town or even in places such as, um, let's say you're spending a, an overnight in Milford Town. Let's say you only access to food and you should absolutely shop before you head there. But if you do run out of food, uh, your only access to food therefore will be like the, the the, the small kind of 10 items which are sitting behind the counter of the holiday park and that's basically it so you may be stuck in some places with very 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 little um so obviously always have you know always make sure that you you know you have a pack of rice and, and a couple of condiments to go with it to uh, you know have a backup but uh, if i were you i would actually have a bunch of very easy recipes something based on potatoes something based on rice just some super simple um recipe to be able to make almost any time um, on the road and that will definitely kind of help you same thing for snacks once you find snacks that you that you like and that are gluten-free i will kind of stock up on those because one of the things that laura didn't mention when talking about supermarket is that one supermarket of one brand and another supermarket the same way and can have widely different stocks. We've seen that a lot in New Zealand. Some supermarkets in Auckland will stock a lot of different stuff and a lot of different brands, but then you travel down to a town like Gisborne and you have a supermarket of the same brand and they will have a widely different offering. So you may not be able to rely always on the same supermarket, let's say Pack and Safe, to have the same products everywhere uh, just because some of them will be very different sizes mm -hmm. or because also the population uh, in different regions may have different needs so for this reason i will first stock up on snacks if you find a snack that you like you know just buy everything you can you can carry basically and uh <laughs> it feels like supermarket sweep <laughs> buy everything <laughs> yeah. you can carry and run but uh, that's not what i mean but you know um and also have a bunch of recipes that you are you are able to kind of carry with you uh on the side note as well if you do have to take medication or to have to have medication with you and you're coming in New Zealand for an extended period of time let's say on a working holiday visa you are able to bring two months worth of medication with three you. months three months yeah, yeah sorry three months worth of medication with you and uh, make sure that you bring a, a paper from your doctor as well and so therefore when you come to New Zealand you'll be able to get another uh, prescription from another doctor so that's a that's another tidbit for you uh, but if you're just coming for you so Ryan Josh says coming for two only weeks. two weeks yeah. so you should be you should be absolutely fine and you are able to bring as much uh, medication as you will need for two weeks that that should be absolutely no problem but it's always handy to have a, a, a letter from the doctor yeah. you know just to make sure that uh, you are able to follow that with you know if at custom they ask you some questions about those pills or anything like that yeah Anything else about gluten-free in New Zealand? I think we've covered All just right. about everything. So yeah. if you did find that useful, make sure to uh, head to nzpocketguide.com. There is a full travel guide right here, easy and free for you to use. You can also reward our hard work by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel for more travel tips for New Zealand. In the meantime, Laura and I will get back to the live chat and answer a ton of questions. All right, guys, I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to go over everything you guys were saying. Um, okay, so we have Damien Brown. So don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to skip anyone. I will read all the comments. It just will take us a, a wee while to get all the way down there. So Damien Brown says, please, I'm Damien from Ghana, West Africa. Oh, nice. Uh, it says, when will the border open? We have a full video on the channel, mate, uh, which actually covers all of predictions for the border opening. Um, but in short, we don't think it's opening between November or December, uh, sorry, before November or December 2021 and probably only in 2022. But check out in, uh, in, in on our channel. You can click on the icon of our channel. We have a full video with our border opening predictions. It's pretty easy to find. You click on video and then you find uh, the, a video with a big, bright red and yellow um, the thumbnail and it says New Zealand border opening predictions. We have Clay Bryant, which is waving at us. Wave back at Clay. Yay. <laughs> uh, we have Extreme Talota that says Morena. Morena, Morena. mate. How are you doing? Uh, we have Morsin Habib that says, uh, I watched your video on border opening for international students. I'm excite excited and patient, hoping for better updates soon. I'm planning to be a PhD in Wellington. I'm a big fan. Keep up the good job. Cool. Thank you very much, Morsin. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, let us know when you are heading to Wellington, what kind of PAG you're doing. That's exciting. Uh, Adrian just retracted his message. Mohamed Radwan says, hi. I noticed sunset in Queenstown after 9 p.m. What is going on? It's summer in New Zealand, so the days are longer. So because we are in the southern hemisphere, uh, we're having longer day now 
So, you know, um, you know, December or January and February is actually summer in New Zealand. And then in winter, which is June, July, August, uh, we're having shorter day because it's cold and, and winter. Yeah. So we just are the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. We like to do things differently in New Zealand. <laughs> Michael Connell says, good morning. Watching, watching you from the car park at Te Mato Apohe oh. Bridge Car Park, which is one of the most innovative bridge in New Zealand. Uh, it is, it's the automated, automated river crossing bridge in Whangarei. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. What are you planning on doing in Whangarei? Yeah, what is well, the, what's the plan? Today is do nothing day <laughs> and yeah. you are in Whangarei. So what are you going to be doing? We recommend the Abbey Caves if you haven't already been there. Oh, yeah. That's um, really nice. We have a video on the channel so you can check out what that's all about. But they're really cool to explore. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let us know what you're doing today, Michael. Uh, Omo Yajowo Sobo says, Kia ora from Nigeria. Kia, Kia ora. ora. Mm -hmm. um, Mohamed Radwano, how would you read that? Jordan, thank you very much for pitching in when we were answering the question, by the way, with Foursquare. That's yeah. really awesome. Adrian says, hello, friends. How is New Zealand in terms of bike path? Is it easy to get around on a bike? There's a lot of bike, uh, mountain biking trails in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and there is more uh, cycleways in Auckland nowadays. But is yeah. it easy to get all around the country in a bike, Laura? Um, well, yeah, like Robin says, in Auckland, so mostly in the large cities, they have cycleways, which is really nice and convenient for just commuting around um, only the larger cities, the towns, not so much. Um, and for getting around New Zealand, say if you want to go between towns, uh, there's really not um, that much infrastructure for cyclists. Um, there's some people that are brave enough to attempt going on the side of the road. But in New Zealand, they're a little less educated on how to drive with um, cyclists on the road. They, they, pass, um, they, they pass you quite close. Yes. <laughs> uh, getting a clip on the shoulder with a wing mirror is uh, quite common for cyclists in New Zealand. So um, we wouldn't recommend cycling between towns. Um, yeah, just for safety reasons. But if you are in the cities, like I say, um, cycleways are pretty popular. But if you're more into mountain biking, um, there are a ton of trails that you can do around the country. Um, and actually, uh, you've got the there's um, there's a series of uh, the Great Rides yes. that's coming out on our channel at the moment, where you can watch um, one of our Great Rides experts. We did an interview with, um, who is in charge of the New Zealand Great Rides app. Can uh, give you lots of uh, information on all the amazing bike trails around the country. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so there is some places where you can go from one town to another, you know, as part of like really long cycle trail and everything mm -hmm. like, uh, like, you know, in the South Island. And we talk about it in those videos, but in, in the general sense, you're better off taking, you know, public transport and then using your bike for, you know, once you're in places. Yeah. Uh, SJ Park says very early morning, guys. Yes, if I remember, you're from Korea and you wake up at like um, super ridiculous o'clock, ridiculous o'clock, <laughs> like 3 a.m. or something. Like that yeah. is that correct? Did I get that right? I think I think I'm remembering. That's been a while since you uh, you showed up to the live session, but uh, maybe my memory is failing me. Um, mm -hmm. Park. Uh, Robert Laliberte says, forget the French kiss from last week. The hungry before you do no snudge. Do you have to take the other person out for a movie or dinner first? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, not it's not customary to do that, but maybe they would enjoy that. I mean, <laughs> he says, do you recommend that the person practice on the mirror first? How long should the hungry last? So should the first hungry last? Do you have to close your eyes? Laura did. Uh, yeah, so they actually told me how to do it properly. Um, when we we have done it um, in various places around. Let me read his like, next comment, and then you then you answer the question. Oh, okay. okay. He says, well... "All kidding aside, <laughs> who initiated the ritual? I don't think you must assume that the Maori will do a honky just to just about anyone. I imagine they are all selective as to who they engage with." Yeah. So um, right, now you can speak. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. I don't think I would engage a honky first. I think I'd always, um, you know, people from the Maori culture, if that's what they're. If if that's what they're you know customary to do and that's what they what they prefer to do in greeting because you know they you they usually i guess like from what i've seen like um, maori people tend to greet each other that way but when you're just sort of you know we have a couple of maori friends but when we meet each other we don't do a hongi when, no. we, when we meet each other but when you're doing sort of touristy activities around the country if you're going to do sort of like a 
Maori tourist experience um, or going to a cultural show or something. Um, quite often, just because they want to give you sort of the authentic, traditional Maori experience, then um, they will sort of engage with you to do a hongi and they will show you exactly what to do. Um, which indeed they did tell me when, uh, well, to both of us, the proper way to do it is to sort of touch the forehead first and then the nose and close your eyes when you're doing it and take a deep breath when you are touching the head and the nose and then just for a second and then you pull away. So that's what they told us to do at the time. And I'm sure different areas around New Zealand may do things a little bit differently, but yeah. Um, you're not expected to do a hongi with everyone you meet when you're traveling around take a New while. Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Tufik Wayman says, work visa, which date open? Uh, check out the video of our New Zealand border opening predictions on the channel and you'll have all our thoughts and information that we currently have on that. But, you know, 2022, uh, probably. That's, that's probably what you can expect. Um, SJ Park says been quite a long time since i've been here how are you guys we're doing pretty well how is it going on your side of the world uh you know new zealand is uh currently experiencing a fantastic summer mm -hmm. there's been uh you know fantastic days we've been by the lakes very often we've been walking we've been by rivers yeah. uh, you know been gardening it's just kind of <laughs> like a nice sunny summer that we are all enjoying yeah nice and warm at the moment Michael Connell says we have a night and day in the North Island too. Oh, so it's a night and day. Night the and day. Star, yeah. Yeah. Uh, night and day in the North Island too, a smaller version of the Foursquare. Unlike Foursquare that are generally open 24-7 in the busier places. I just can't seem to recall where I've seen night and day in the North Island. Yeah, I don't fair. think I, I feel like I haven't really seen it myself in the North Island. But once you go in the South Island, you do see yeah, it Maybe they're more often. prominent in the yeah. South Island, yeah. Um, okay, Kisho Alai says, any update on, or oh, hi, any update news on border opening for world uh, or for post-study work visa? So any updates, we do some videos. As you, as you may have noticed on the channel, this week alone, I just posted uh, an update for student visas in New Zealand. As soon as we got some information, actually, uh, the press release, uh, sorry, the video came out only four hours after the press release came out. So, you know, that's how quickly we try to keep you informed. Um, so, yeah, that, that's all the update that we have. Uh, if anything, we are sticking with our prediction at the moment. So if you want to watch our video with our New Zealand border opening predictions, you can find that on the channel. Uh, you'll uh, know where everything we know and everything we think about that at the moment. Uh, where are we? Uh, Frank says, uh, Frank Wonder say, Frank Wonder, are you a magician? I feel like this will be the Frank perfect. Frank Wonder. Yeah, that would be perfect <laughs> for a headline act. Frank Wonder <laughs> and the Wonderettes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, I love that name. I think that's awesome. Anyway, Frank Wonder says, for me to attain both pair of your glasses, what would be the bottom price in euro or dollars? Wait, what? So you want to... Wait. He wants to buy both our glasses. So if you want to buy two pairs of glasses in New Zealand, is that mm -hmm. what you're asking? Or what? I think he's actually asking. I think he's just messing with us. Okay, that's that. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, the price of glasses in New Zealand, you know, there are some companies like Specsavers, you know, that are popular worldwide as well. And usually two pairs of glasses is about 400 bucks. Anyway, here you go. Uh, <laughs> if that was a serious question, you got your answer. So 400 New Zealand dollars, you'll have to do the conversion for euros or US dollars. Uh, if, and if I was a joker, I just didn't get it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Uh, okay, Clay says breakfast cereals in Dunedin supermarket come in a large and medium size. We found in Queenstown supermarket tiny ones served box. <laughs> um, we stocked up while we were there, never seen them before. Okay, wow. Oh, you mean it... like those things like from hotel, they leave them in your hotel room, like the little tiny version of those uh, cereal yeah. boxes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems like a lot of extra packaging for no reason, though. I think, yeah. like, you know, one big box should be fine. Yeah, I've seen those. Um... Yeah, actually more when I've been traveling elsewhere around the world, usually when they have like, they have these little packages of cereals. Yeah. I actually saw them in Pack and Save the other day, actually, but yeah. I would never dream about buying those. No, <laughs> there's too much packaging on top of yeah. it. Already, it's already too small anyway. I feel like... Uh, and I it doesn't even waste, fill up yeah. a full bowl. Each of those little packages is like, is like a half bowl. So it's like not even a full portion. <laughs> <laughs> Mosh, Mosh, Mosin, uh, so he says, I will definitely update you on the PhD. I'm also a wildlife enthusiast and travel freak. New Zealand scenery is breathtaking. I would love to meet you guys when the board open for us Kenyans. Fingers yeah. crossed in the open soon, mate. Uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, and yeah, you absolutely will love New Zealand. 
SJ Park says, um, I don't know if you've tackled this topic already, but if you receive a vaccine that uh, that does change your situation about applying a visa, I mean, can you apply even if the border is not, isn't open yet? I don't know if that makes any sense. So that makes a lot of sense, of course, uh, your question. And so far, uh, if you actually watch our New Zealand prediction video for the border openings, I actually address that very question. And we go over uh, the fact that we don't think that New Zealand is going to jump on getting a lot of people that are already vaccinated coming to New Zealand. I think it will become a requirement. That's pretty much for sure. But I don't think that that will give you like a kind of a front of the queue kind of place yeah. just yet. And just as it stands right now, yeah. to make it clear, there has been no change to the borders opening for people with the vaccines that hasn't actually... Uh, yeah, basically, no, that has not made any changes whatsoever. So just to make that clear. Okay, and then we have uh, Clay's, Clay's... You know, Clay's specifying just quickly that he said that uh, what he said about the cereals, that was just in response of different stocks in different supermarkets. Yes, So like okay. he was saying, I can only find those little box in Queenstown. I never found oh, them elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's very true. Like um, so many times, like there used to be a, a brand of juice that I used to love. I mean, it turned out that the company closed, but man, I used to love that brand of juice. And we could only find it in Oakland uh, supermarkets. So every time we we're popping in Oakland, we we're trying to buy as many as possible. Mm. And then that fateful day, yes. when I grabbed that last bottle on the shelf, I did not know that was the last one I would ever Yeah, we even juice. drove up to where oh. the factory used to be to see if we could buy some straight from the factory. Yeah. But then we saw that they'd all been, the signs had been painted over. Yeah. Ah, uh, dear. Yeah, I we didn't really drive through there. It was just a very like it was like a five minute day tour. Yeah, the no, GPS we didn't go out of our way but, uh, to do it, but but yeah, ah oh, man, but yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting how really it changes. Even where we are right now, you must have uh, you must have a lot of difference. Yeah. Uh the name of the juice I think was called Greenways. Is was yes. correct? Was it correct? Yeah, Greenways I think so. brand. That was that was fantastic juice. That was one of the only juice you could find in New Zealand that was not from concentrated uh, juice. So all of the juice in New Zealand are kind of like basically powder that they re you know mm. add some water to it and just return into a juice so it basically have no vitamins or no you know no yeah yeah it was kind of like it was juice made from real yeah exactly um, fresh fruit so, yeah. so it was yeah. like really really good juice and uh yeah yeah so yeah the, the rest they more it was, it was juice, obviously yeah. too expensive to make and yeah. uh, not enough people were buying it exactly so, yeah, but they, they were actually very bust. fairly priced they were way cheaper <laughs> than those charlies and everything that are outrageously yeah. expensive. anyway we are we are getting completely <laughs> sidetracked to juice wise back back to uh the questions uh we are here i think um, yeah, so Clay said they have just finished a bike track from Cromwell to Clyde on the other side of the Clutha. Looks like it would be a nice ride. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. So between Alexandra and Clyde, which are the two towns quite close to each other near Cromwell, they have a really awesome bike track that we do have a video of us doing on the channel. Um, so if you're looking for bike trails between Alexandra and Cromwell, and Clyde and um, that's really cool but yeah if you wanted to extend it apparently now you can go to Cromwell nice. so that yeah that would be a really cool ride why would you as soon as you arrive in Alexandria you get a ton of wine why would you keep biking after that <laughs> just sit by the winery and drink 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 yeah experience the New Zealand wineries well they have all that in Cromwell as well actually Yes, but you have to bike less to get to the winery if you stop at <laughs> Alexandria depends where you're starting I guess <laughs> um Okay, uh, SJ Park says, yes, you are right. Uh, it is 4 a.m. I would like to join you guys every week, but I can't seem to wake up that early every week. <laughs> yeah, <Fair enough. laughs> I mean, I get that. We, we, we hold no grudges. And that's why we leave the videos up uh, afterwards. You know, the live session, they're always available like for later watch. And actually, hi to anyone that's actually not watching this live. You know, I actually mm. just really, we actually have about like 200 people every week which actually watch that not live. The so, replay, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to call you guys replayers. <laughs> so here, yeah, this one is to you guys all that are replaying the live session after the fact. It's awesome to also have you on board. And if you feel like you wanted to ask us questions and you didn't have any, make sure to put them in the comment on the video. We'll print them and we'll answer them to you guys for you guys next week. It's absolutely fine. You are as big of a part of the live session as people watching live and as us you know it's a it's a three-way here mm -hmm. there is people in the live session there's people that are watching afterward and the two of us on the couch and we're all here to kind of work together uh by the way if you find this video useful uh, make sure to hit the like button it's a great free way to say thank you for all our hard work <laughs> um michael connell says uh it's a do nothing day like you said 
He's meeting up in Fangare with the fellow traveler that has just purchased the motorhome and started traveling around. Then head up to Russell, oh, cool. the hellhole of the Pacific. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, Moshin says it's actually Saturday at 10.20 p.m. here in Nairobi, Kenya. It's great to watch the live podcast. That's awesome. Cool. 10 th- 10 20 p.m. in so basically we are live so if you're watching us in kenya it is at 10 p.m on saturday every week then that's awesome yeah and uh, that it starts okay kiwi loren is here hey kiwi loren says hi robin and laura i just finished reading a book about the te araroa araroa and um, are you too crazy enough to attempt it is it on the bucket list what is it say araroa just give okay. some context to people <laughs> so this is a walking trail that goes right from the tip of the north island all the way to the bottom of the south island um and we have not been crazy enough to attempt it just yet um we've done a lot of parts of it because it basically <laughs> links a lot of trains mm. uh, obviously it's not a, a specifically made trail that goes all around the country but it's a link in between a lot of different trades for example yeah. the Tongaero crossing is is on there and there's a lot of trades which you know you basically walk from one one trail to the other and you keep on going so we've done a lot of sections of it pretty mm. much a big big part of all the trades we've done are part of that but yeah. we haven't done the whole thing together because it would take three months wasn't it yeah i think um it, uh, it depends obviously how uh how fast you walk and stuff but i think they said it takes like 160 days or something to look at. wow so Wow. I'd have to double check that, but um, I think I did hear that it did take. Um, I did see one for one. The one person I was reading about said it was like about 160 days. But yeah, it, it's it's a big undertaking. Yeah. Um, it would be really a, an amazing way to see the country. Obviously, slowly, so you can take everything <laughs> in, and <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if it is on our bucket list. Yeah. Maybe I think I just never. I don't think in my entire lifetime I will ever have that much time on my hands. Yes, that's as simple as you that. You definitely you know? have to put a lot of time aside to yeah. do it. Um, since we did our year where we did uh, New Zealand's biggest gap year, where we did 365 days, 365 activities, we definitely, you know, we put all that time aside to uh, travel around New Zealand. But I think nowadays we kind of do our traveling short in, in short bursts. Yeah. So yeah. Not sure if it's on the bucket list, but maybe you could never say never. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but if you're planning on doing it, Kiwi Laura, and we'd love for you to send us some videos and some yeah. photos and everything, and you know, we'll we'll document your uh, your your journey if you want. So if mm-hmm. you want to be the the ambassador of NZ Pocket Guide doing the Tower yeah. Trail, you know, we'd be happy to send you uh, there and uh, you know help you organize all that. Uh, Clay Bryan says that it was in response of all the different supermarkets. I already read that. What's the juice? Where we did talked about the juice? Where am I on? Um, uh, Riwani uh, Toshka says NZ Immigration now open and working uh, they are open and working they're actually working on their backlog right now so I don't think you can submit application just yet but if you head to immigration.govt.nz you'll have all the information and the current status and everything like that so I think that's the best place for you to get that information so it's immigration.govt.nz uh, Clay Bryan says did you do the Otago Rail Trail um, no, we haven't actually done the entire Otago, Otago Rail Trail. We've done little bits We've of done it. Some section as well. Yep. Um, thing, we do a lot of section yes. of stuff, but doing the whole thing is always a big commitment for us since we always have so much on our agenda. Yeah. So um, this trail is, um, I'm not quite sure how many days it is. It might be about five days or something like that. But that goes between um, Clyde, which is near Cromwell and Alexandra, where we were talking about just before. And it goes to Middlemarch, which is kind of near Dunedin um, and you can actually take um, the uh, Dunedin Railways train um, it used to be called the Tyere Gorge Railway but they've just rebranded to a new name um, but yeah you can take the train out to um, that side of the rail trail but it's a very easy trail it's a grade one grade two so it's usually um, although it's a long trail it's pretty accessible to pretty much anyone there's loads of different um bike trail providers that will do e-bikes or normal bikes and um all the equipment that you need to do it so yeah it's um it's a good one to do if you are just beginning but you want to have like a really cool multi-day biking adventure Nice. Um, and then Clay said the Bannockburn wine is way better. Yes, we did stay in Bannockburn actually yeah. when we were, when well, we stayed in Cromwell, but it was actually a Bannockburn uh, campsite that we stayed in. Yeah. Um, and yeah, surrounded by vineyards, which was pretty cool. 
Uh, okay, well, we, uh, Emmanuel K. Joseph says, Hi, guys. How is your day? Pretty awesome. It starts Pretty wonderfully. Good. We're hanging out with you guys for an hour. And, uh, you know, the sun is uh, high up already. It's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be another hot day in New yeah. Zealand. Um, Karin Alami says, Hello, beautiful people. Oh, oh, hello, Karin. How are you doing this week? Thank you for joining us yet another week. That's cool. Goth Azoth say, uh, says, um, hi from Dubai, and says, when do you think they'd open the border for the other international students in 2022? We really don't have an idea just yet. I think there's going to be some, like, you know, some allocations, like they've just been, you know, we just did a video with an announcement with a thousand students being able to come. So they're going to kind of, you know, like add them slowly and surely. But yeah, I feel like uh, the safe bet for like someone that just want to, come for first study in New Zealand, uh, a safe bait is 2022. Um, I, I don't see that happening in like a broader spectrum any earlier than 2022, sadly. SJ Park says, one of the uh, popular YouTubers slash filmmaker is going to New Zealand for 10 days this April. April. Uh, considering the lockdown, may I ask, what is your opinion on how they got a visa or permit to enter the country? I wouldn't know. I think maybe, you know, first they will have to go through the quarantine process. So they will stay in a 14-day quarantine for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not just coming for, for 10 days. Maybe they're just going to film for 10 days, but they will stay in a 14 days quarantine. And uh, they may have worked with, uh, you know, the local um, tourism board, you know, the uh, you know Tourism New Zealand, maybe they, they sort things out for them. I, I wouldn't really know. Uh, maybe you know. they're a New Zealand resident or a New yeah. Zealand citizen. Maybe, yeah, maybe they are. They are also from New Zealand. So I don't really know know what would be the, the process right here no. uh, some people actually get some special access and everything but it's very rare occasion maybe they're just that famous that New Zealand wants the coverage so maybe that's what it is yeah um, you know there are some countries you know which are willing to make some exception for some people but you still have to abide by the quarantine um, system yeah Sandeep Timis Timil Sina Sorry for butchering your name, Sandeep. He says, hello, brother and sister. I'm from Nepal, and I am planning, planning to continue my master in EIT Napier. Is Napier good for both work and study perspective? Um, well, we can tell you more from a travel perspective because uh, we have uh, neither worked nor studied in Napier. This is more of a travel channel, but we can tell you that um, uh, we know that in Napier, it's very good for seasonal work. It's um, in the Hawke's Bay region, which means that it's it's really famous for its um, horticulture and uh, viticulture. So lots of fruit orchards, lots of vineyards, which require um, seasonal workers. And that's usually really ideal for people that are studying and only staying here for a short time in New Zealand. Um, but in Napier is also a city, so you do have lots of other types of jobs available from hospitality, retail, um, sort of warehouse work as well. And you can probably find some part-time job opportunities um, which will go well with your studying as well. Um, in terms of the institution itself in Napier, we don't have much information on, um, again, because we're more of a travel channel than a studying channel. Um, but yeah, hopefully that's enough information. But in terms of things to do in Napier, um, we do have loads of videos on the channel. If you go onto our channel and search Napier, you'll find um, a whole variety of things to do. Um, yeah, yeah it's, so, an awesome, it's an awesome place yeah. to live in. Yeah. Kimi Lawrence says, and she's talking about the Te Aurora Trail, and she says, as a full-time teacher and a mother of a young child, I can't imagine having the time either. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention living on the other side of the world. But it is tempting. I may be crazy enough. Yeah. Well, you know, leave everything behind. Pack a bag <laughs> and just hike for six months. What about that? Yeah. Karin Alami says, everyone, let's smash the like button for the wonderful job. One, two, three, go. Woo! Yeah, guys, just smash that <laughs> like button. One, two, three, go. Thanks, Karin. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, SJ Park says the YouTuber is Canadian. So, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe they are half Canadian, half Kiwis. I don't know, something like that. I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, Clay Bryan says, uh, uh, what is he replying to? I think it's probably about the... He didn't know that. Oh, Tayeri Gorge Railway. Yeah. Oh, he didn't know that the Tayeri Gorge Railway is changing its name, its oh, branding. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's only just started um, under its new name. I'd have to because it's so new. We do have to do a bit of research on it. But I just saw that they they closed for a very short period and then they reopened as something else. Yeah. Yeah. 
they don't read uh, the trip is about the same, the same anyway because yeah. you don't really change railways that easily. No. You know, there's always a, a lot of work involved to change railways. So yeah. they have fun. They literally just report Yeah, so we are going to be updating the website um, very, very soon yeah. with all the new information. And then we will be up to date and we'll be able to tell you guys all about it. I just need to do all the research first. <laughs> Luke Willis is Kia ora. Kia ora, Kia ora. He says, I was hoping to visit my family in New Zealand Christmas 2020, but I'm hoping for 2021 or 2022. Well, we will have yeah. our fingers crossed for you. I, I know a lot of people did miss out Christmas with families or everything. But the good thing is that it is 20. I mean, it was 2020. So at least, you know, we actually were able to actually digitally be with each other. You know, like it's, it's yes. kind of good. There is, there is a lot of technology. You know, picture doing that in the 1900s. Uh, you know, Ooh. doing Christmas by mail, <laughs> that would have been less fun. So here yeah. you go, you know, try to see the positive side of things. Uh, Extreme Talota says, uh, well, I'll see you guys next week. I'm heading out for a run before the sun gets too hot. Yeah, Good idea. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate the emojis, by the way. I like the emojis. It's, it's, all right. it's always pleasing to <laughs> yes. me. Yes, it's easier to understand yes. what you mean. Um, sun but yeah, it gets <laughs> really, really, really hot in New Zealand at the moment. Yeah. And you burn really fast. I mean, yesterday we spent the day out uh, by a lake. And we probably applied sunscreen. I applied sunscreen four times in like... I applied it twice, but I stayed under the shade as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it got really, really, yeah. really hot. I felt like I was burning regularly. Yeah. So, yeah. New Zealand does have some of the highest UV levels in the world. So yeah. it is really um, important to make sure that you uh, don't expose yourself to the sun too much. Um, yeah, make sure that you have lots of sunscreen. Yeah. And yeah. a hat. Because, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but there is a hole in the ozone layer around the, the planet. And, and the ozone is actually filtrating a lot of the UV rays from the sun. But the hole that we created with our CO2 emissions, you know, from plane and cars and, and you know, plastic fridges. and everything, like, and fridges and all that, <laughs> um, you know, it's actually right on top of New Zealand and, 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 and Australia. So, um, I mean, our, the side of Australia. So that means that there is basically no protection between the sun and your skin. So you've got to apply even more sunscreen and it gets hot really fast. Yes. So, yeah. Um, okay. Where are we on? Um, SJ Park saying, thanks, always so helpful. Ah, you're, you're very welcome. welcome. Courtney McFarlane says, hello from St. Louis, Missouri in the USA. If you could only pick one thing to do in New Zealand, what would it be? One thing? It depends on, okay, right now, I kind of really want to be in the water, right? So <laughs> I kind of, I think I will go scuba dive in Paul Knight Islands. That's, uh, okay. that's probably what I will be doing because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I feel like I want a nice cool down. Um, there is some beautiful uh, arch which are very friendly to like, uh, you know, beginners in scuba diving. A uh, ton of fish to see, like blue mau mau's everywhere. And uh, if you're lucky, you get to see some seals as well. So it's it just, it's just pretty awesome. So today, that's what I feel I would be doing. But I'll be honest with you, um, with you, uh, Courtney. I'm pretty sure I will pick something different in another day. Uh, it's just yeah. it's just what I would feel like doing today. Yeah. What for would you pick to, for to me, do For me, I think I would do um, just, uh, maybe I'm cheating a little bit, but I would do the Hollyford Track, which is a multi-day hiking trail oh, yeah. in the Fiordland National Park. And I'd do a multi-day uh, activity just so it lasts longer um <laughs> but yeah i mean the hiking trails in new zealand are <laughs> absolutely <laughs> phenomenal they um they yeah fiordland national park is um an unesco world heritage um area so it's preserved for its beautiful beautiful natural landscapes it's got mountains and um, really dense thick forests rivers lakes all that good stuff oh, so it's cooler at the moment over there yes. than it is in the north island so that'd be that'd be a bit nicer and it would be yeah. yeah hiking under the under the canopy of the forest would be quite nice um and nice and refreshing today and um yeah mo i feel like a lot of people come to new zealand to see more the natural side of new zealand and that would be a really awesome way to see the more natural side but I'd like to turn this around. Like everybody in the live chat right now, Karine, Michael, uh, you know, Martina, Kiwi, Lauren, Adrian, uh, even you, Courtney. So can you guys, uh, all of you guys, but, um, you know, tell us what's on top of your New Zealand bucket list. What's the thing that you want to do the most in New Zealand? I'd like to turn it around to yeah. kind of, uh, see what other people also want to do. So yeah. uh, that'd, be, that'd be cool to do. So just hit the, anyone watching right now, there's 23 people watching. Come on, can we get 20 people giving me uh, what's on top of their New Zealand bucket list? What's the thing they want the most to do in New Zealand? Yeah. Come on, guys. Um all right. In the meantime, uh, we have Adrian that says, have you ever been to the Lord of the Ring village? 
Um, so that's the Hobbiton. And he said, if so, would you recommend it? You can see a video of us actually uh, doing that. Loa, would you recommend going to Hobbiton? I would recommend going to Hobbiton if you are a fan of the Lord of the Rings or you are a fan of the Hobbit. Or if you're a fan of movie making in general, um, they're the three main things I would go there for um, because it sort of, you know, it makes the magic come to life. You recognize the scene from um, those movies. So it's usually it, it's usually pretty cool if you are really into the Lord of the Rings. Um, for other people, uh, what we've had a feedback from, because um, I know I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Lord of the Rings, Robin's meh kind of a fan, um, <laughs> but what I've heard from other people that, that aren't really into the Lord of the Rings, and basically the thing that people are a little bit put off by is the price of going to Hobbiton, and, um, but the fact that they're not really into... Um, you know what it's all about which is the Lord of the Rings and movie making if they're not really into those two subjects then it's kind of a, a little bit of expensive for what it is so you kind of um, yeah not be uh, too enthused by it um, that's kind of the feedback that we've heard from other people that aren't really into Lord of the Rings cool come on guys keep on giving us the thing you want the most to do in New Zealand so we can uh, give some ideas to Courtney um, all right, so who else do we have in the live chat right now? Uh, we have Kiwi Lorena says, half Canadian, half Kiwi. I call it Kiwi Nadian. Uh, I officially gave myself that title while I was living in New Zealand, despite not having any Kiwi blood at all, <laughs> just a Kiwi soul. Oh, that's oh, nice. That's fun. Karin Alami says, you're welcome. I love your channel and I always try to attend your live session. Thanks for all you do. You're very welcome, welcome. Karin. We do that because people like you are being so nice to us. So that's awesome. Martina says, I watched yesterday a documentary on Mighty Trains. The topping was the Kiwi Railway on the North Island, 11 hours from Auckland to Wellington, and the Transalpine in the South Island, 5 hours from Christchurch to Greymouth. Have, we done, um, have you ever done this? So I've done the North Island, but we didn't do a video about it. And the South Island, the uh, Transalpine, we actually have a full video of that. So you can actually watch us uh, doing that. You just mm. type on, on YouTube, you type uh, Transalpine and then NZ Pocket Guide, and you can find a video of us doing it. So yes, we've done it. It's kind of a fun. It, it's really fun. It's fancy trains. You know, it's definitely different that, uh, you know, I'm being from France originally, you know, I use the train a lot as transportation. It's very different than uh, what you usually use in, in in Germany or in France or in mainland Europe as trained for transportation. It's more of a, of a luxury treat yourself experience. So check yeah. out the video, Martin. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Kiwi Lauren says, I've been really getting into watching Drew Binsky on YouTube. Uh, he has five more countries left before he's seen every country in the world. And he rates New Zealand in the top five most naturally beautiful on earth. Oh, that's nice. Ooh. That's a lot of qualifiers, yeah. but that's, that's very nice. <laughs> Karin Alami says, okay, so we get, we're getting some people giving you some uh, ideas, Courtney. So we have Karin Alami that says she would like to hike and scuba dive when she comes to New Zealand. Kiwi Lauren says, I've done a lot of travel around New Zealand. So much of my New Zealand bucket list has been checked off already. I think the big remaining one is the Tongariro Crossing. So here you go. You get Tongariro Crossing. Anthony Comstock says he wants to see all the locations from the series The Tribe. So oh, basically, yeah. he wants to walk around Wellington. <laughs> um, Rushab says, uh, no, he doesn't have a suggestion. I will read that later. Uh, yeah, so Anthony says Lower Hurt and Wellington. David um, has one. David Burrow says, when I finally am able to come to travel New Zealand, I'm looking forward to seeing Milford Sound and hiking on Stuart Island. Good one. Yes. That's, that's one, one of Laura's favorite. Uh, Adrian says, being from Canada, I love mountain and hiking. So I would really like to check out the Glacier Mountains in the South Island. That's first on my bucket list. Um, and Martina says, uh, regarding your question, Robin, if I could come second count to New Zealand, I would love to see the Tongaro Crossing and visit Dunedin. So here you go, Courtney. You got a lot of ideas. Um, and Courtney herself says, at this point, I would be happy to just step foot on New Zealand, but I've always wanted to try the giant swing in Queenstown. Oh, here yeah. you go, adventurous. I like mm. that. Adrenaline pumping. So here you go, Courtney. you got a wide range of, of suggestions right here. Okay, let's go back to Rushab. He says, hey, I will be able to come to Nelson in five months for studies and my new life journey begins. Nice. Cool. That's awesome. What will you want to do in Wilson? Is there any activities around Nelson that you'd like to do, Rishab? Tell us about it. Uh, BJN says, we are associate... Oh, uh, did I follow? Did I miss some? Okay, he says, we follow the world news closely. 
The corona plague mutation are themselves producing mutation of mutation. New Zealand is not is not hurrying at all to open its border. Now uh, let's uh, be real, uh, world realistic. Yes, that's what we said. Uh, you know, by the end of this year or even next year, not any time sooner. He says we are associated with some New Zealand universities. You should advise all of those potential overseas uni students to work and save as much money as possible while they are still at home. Then. Uh, the New Zealand dollar is going up, up, up. Yes, it is. It is. Okay, good advice. Thank you. Uh, Kiwi Lawrence says, Hello, Adrian, fellow Canadian. From I'm from Saskatchewan. So here you go. She said, uh, She hiked the French Dunes of Glacier in 2007, and it was fantastic. So you, can, uh, you can't hike onto the glacier anymore. Now you have to do the heli hike, which you have to take a helicopter, land on the glacier, and then hike on there. Um, oh. <clears throat> due to global warming, the glacier have retreated quite a lot and now it's not accessible anymore. So, <laughs> here you go. Here's a tidbit for you. Any yeah. of you guys have some more activities you have first on your bucket list? We had about like, what, six, seven? Yeah, or if you've already travelled in New Zealand, which I know a lot of you already have, what was your favourite thing to do in New Zealand so that we can all recommend each of us some really cool things to yeah. do? Michael, stop doing nothing and uh, tell us what's your favorite uh, thing to do. Yeah. St stop taking the do nothing day so seriously and tell us what <laughs> you want to do. Um, who else do we have? SJ Park, what, what do you want to do in New Zealand? Clay, what's your uh, must do here? So we have been everywhere that says my favorite things in Cape Kidnappers. Do you yeah. like Cape Kidnappers? That's a really awesome place to go. Um, there's several different ways to get there. Um, there is a hike which you can do. Um, it takes about five hours to do. Um, it follows sort of along the cliffs of Cape Kidnappers on the bottom of the beach. Um, but you can only do it at low tide and you do have to you do have to walk quite fast to get there and back before the tide starts coming in. Um, so that, that's a bit of a mission, but it is really fun. We, um, I've done it before and it, it's really amazing. But if you actually want to spend more time with the basically the main attraction of Cape Kidnappers is the Gannet Colonies. Yes. Um, if you want to spend more time, there's a couple of tour options to go and spend more time with the with the gannets. There's the um, uh, there's the tractor tour, which is I think it's called Gannet Gannet Beach Adventures. It is um, exactly called that. Yep. Yeah. And then there's also um, another tour, which is either by sort of like a bus or you can do private four wheel drive tours with them, and that's called um, I think it's called Gannet Overland Adventures um, or Gannet Overland, and that takes you on a different route to get to the Gannet Colony, so you can spend more time with the birds. Twenty two watches, twenty two likes. That's awesome, guys. You guys are the best. Um, all right, so that's another idea for you, uh, Courtney and the Cape Kidnappers. We have Karin that says, I would love to rent an RV and travel all over New Zealand. All the landscapes are gorgeous. Yeah, actually, yeah. one of the best things about traveling in New Zealand is, is just... Yeah. The drives, the sceneries are fantastic, yeah. Oh, my throat is, like, Ooh. dying right now. Nine more minutes and no throat left. Uh, Kiwi Lauren, can you read what she says? Okay, so Kiwi Lauren says, the Nevis bungee was the scariest and most epic accomplishment, uh, though I'm not sure I'd do it again. Um, loved the canyon swing in Queenstown as well. Jumping off the Sky Tower in Auckland is always fun. Yeah, they're very. all of those are pretty epic activities because New Zealand is, has got a, a reputation for its crazy adrenaline experiences. Um, and the Nevis bungee is the highest bungee jump in New Zealand, and you can do that in Queenstown. And yes... Um, uh, we we have a video actually of the ledge bungee on our channel, which is it's slightly different. Instead of um, the tie the tying going around your legs, they actually tie you around your waist, and that way you can do freestyle bungee. You basically run to the edge of the ledge, and you can do flips. You can pretend you're karate kicking. You can do whatever you want. Oh, you so, can just pass out like I did and don't jump. Yeah, so we do have a video <laughs> on the channel if you want to check out us doing the ledge bungee which was a uh, yeah it was a kind of a mess uh, I managed to do it in the end but it is I think the scariest thing I've ever done so yeah uh, you do have to be uh, quite crazy to do a bungee jump all right Courtney uh, so more people are giving you some ideas I love the fact the whole community right now is helping you Courtney so Michael Connell says we do a lot of traveling however at the top of our bucket list is to be full time on the road to explore everything better with more time. Yeah. Ah, here you go. That that's a pretty that's pretty epic. Jonathan Vincent says, if you are in Northland, I would recommend visiting Bailey's Beach. Oh, that's a nice yeah, place nice. to go and relax. Clay Bryant says, Hammer Springs is relaxing, and when you want to channel your inner child, go for some 
Rides on the slides. Yes, that is pretty fun to go on the water park section of Hammer Springs. I have to say, I, we, so we have a video of us in Hammer Springs, and I have to say, my favorite part was, you know, to go on rides on the slides. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was really fun. I'm not much of a soak and relax kind of guy, yeah. but I'm kind of like, woohoo, kind yeah. of guy. So. Going on that huge Super Bowl, they call it, where you get into like a raft and you can go round and round the bowl. Yeah. You can check out the video of us doing that on the channel. Yeah. So if you want to check out what what on earth we're talking about, it's I think Hanma I'm a, Springs. Yeah, I think I'm a, a little bit too tall for this kind of thing. No, I'm too tall for that ride now, but I still do it. It's fine. Oh, have you grown since then? <laughs> no, no, I should not have done it in oh, the first okay. place. I was too tall for that ride yeah. i think it's for the kids but okay. i liked it mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so yeah here's some more ideas for you uh courtney look at that you know, now you have to stay like six months in new zealand to do all that yeah uh all right kim loren said that be down to try the ledge bungee but the cow bridge bungee uh, on the cow bridge bungee just because it's the original my first bungee and skydive were both in topo yeah we talked about it last week mm -hmm. i remember that yeah uh haljot uh, walia says hey both when the border will open for international students from India, we are stuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So uh, we do have a video with our border opening predictions right on the channel. And I actually did publish an update for students uh, coming to New Zealand. So you may want to check out those videos. To find those videos, you just have to click on the channel name and you go there. Then you click on video and you find all our videos with the bright red and yellow uh, thumbnails. So there's two of them for you to watch, uh, which are relevant. There is the uh, new update, new announcement for um, students. And there is our latest border prediction, which is border prediction number five. Another way to find that is to click on playlist when you are on our channel and you click on travel news and that's all of them right here. And you can watch them all in order. So here you go, many ways to find all this information for you. Um, Clay Bryan says in the Hammer Spring, there's a new ride right now. What is it? Ooh. What is it? Tell us all about it. I think actually I received uh, stuff. We it's on our list of updates today. Oh, actually. yes, yeah, I think Ooh, I can't wait to look into that one. Uh, BJN says, Why not reading most of our letters today? We, uh, we've read all your comments, so we far, read BJN. all your comments. There is none of them that we missed. It just takes a, a yeah, wee we, while we for did, us we did skip one of yours, but we went back up and, and went through them all. So uh, don't worry, we read everyone's yeah. comments. Can't miss yours. They're always in screaming capital <laughs> letters, you know. Um, so we can't really miss them. You can type them normally and we can read them easier. But yeah. Uh, Adrian Lace is making friends with uh, Kiwi Lawrence. Uh, so you guys are uh, chatting together. Uh, or if the question is for us, Adrian, just, just t t tell me. Michael Connell says, when in the South Island, of four places we always go to. Okay, Courtney, are you ready to take some notes? Uh, Michael is actually a Kiwi and he travels around New Zealand all the time so, in his camper van. So his four favorite places on the South Island is Mount Cook. And he usually, usually stays there four days. Then Deniston, he says there's amazing views and it's some of the best in New Zealand. Then Dunedin area. And then he says four. Did I say four? Uh, the list goes on. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. here you go. He tricked you. He's a trickster over there. Look at that. <laughs> that that's a good start, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good three, then. Uh, Kimi and Loren all of those are on the South Island, by yes. the way. Yeah. Kimi Loren says, I've never been to Dunedin, but I do really want to walk up Baldwin Street one day, which is uh, the uh, world's steepest street, uh, according to what book? The Guinness World Records. <laughs> <laughs> I always want good. to slide the word book in there, and then it ends up fumbling. Fumbling um, in my mouth. And then she says, I would love to take part in an organized 5K or 10K run next time I'm in New Zealand uh, if I can't find one at the right time. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our friends actually went down to Queenstown and did one of those uh, a couple of months ago, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, most most uh, large towns and cities in New Zealand do have their own version of a marathon or half marathon throughout the year. Um, so, yeah, actually, we do have um, in our... On nzpocketguide.com, we do have articles which um, are titled the, the biggest events in 2021, and we'll do one for 2022 uh, for next year. But yeah, at the bottom of those articles, we do list all the uh, the main towns which have marathons and half marathons. And usually they do some like smaller, like 5K and 10Ks during those events as well. So yeah, you can usually find them in, in most towns and cities in New Zealand. Um, but I'm not sure if they're all in the same sort of season. I think they're spread out uh, quite a lot throughout the year between between March and December, I'd say. 
Kiwi Lauren is trying to tag Adrian in the comments. Uh, you just do so to tag people in comment. You do art and then you start typing their name, and at some point it's going to highlight. You know, it's going to give you the suggestion. You need to click on on the suggestion itself. You yeah. can't. Uh, tag but maybe if you're doing it on your phone or something, it might not work quite the same. Um, yeah. I imagine that it would be quite different depending on what device you're same. on. Oh, okay, it does work. <laughs> but I, I right. don't know anything about YouTube. <laughs> Karina Lamy says, is there a natural park where there is only native plants of New Zealand? I think I think like some of the national park of New Zealand hasn't been haven't been too badly yeah. contaminated. Like I mean, you know, I see some places like Kulva Island in Stewart Island as well. Yeah. Um Motuara Island. Um no, this one will have some grass. Uh, I'm just trying to think which one are the only one that only have that. Some parts of the Fjordland National Park are barely, barely touched. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty of places um, in native forests mm. and stuff where it does it appears that everything is is native. Um, so, but you know, there's usually like kind of plants do kind of get taken around the country on people's you know seeds get attached to people's feet and stuff. So they do manage to get into. Um, into national parks so it'd be hard to say if it's a hundred percent native forest but there's definitely tracts of, like many tracts of forest around new zealand that are mostly native um they're very easy to find most national parks do have um tracts of completely native forest um on the north island the largest tract of uh rainforest or native forest is in the te Uruweras, um on the north island and then in the south island um I'd say the largest tract of forest that's native is in the Fiordland National Park. Cool. Uh, <laughs> cool. Words yeah. were said. <laughs> oh, well, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what can I add? You literally have like, <laughs> encyclopedic knowledge of New Zealand. So it's kind of like, yeah, what she said. She's right, always. It's annoying. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Anthony Comstock, remind us that that's how we did the end of our video. So here you go. If he's not here again, I always forget. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. it's always a good indicator that it's time to wrap things yeah. up. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you did find this uh, live session useful, make sure to leave us a cheeky like before you leave it. It's always a great way to support all our hard work. Um, and uh, yeah, if you do have some questions and you're watching a replay of this video, make sure to put them in the comments. To be fair, on the comment of any of our videos, and then we print them and we make sure that you guys, uh, you guys are up to date. And uh, we also want to make sure that all of you guys stay safe. So make sure you yes. stay safe. I'm going to see uh, what uh, a couple of people have said some stuff. So Courtney says, thank you all for the great suggestions. So she speaks to all of you guys. Yeah. Thank you all of the watchers for uh, all the great suggestions. She said, hopefully when the border open, I can come and do a working holiday and check all of those locations and activities off. Yeah, there is really a ton. And check out the website. Courtney, you found a lot of inspiration there. And there's a ton of uh, really good uh, advice for you if you want to work and travel in New, New Zealand. So do a working yeah. holiday. So check this one out. Robert Laliberti says, day 321, swimming with dolphin in Taranga. Robin mentioned that there was a limitation of time on, in the water. Do you remember how much time you spent in the water being towed by the boats? It wasn't that long. It was probably less than half an hour. So it's, it's probably like mm. you get like 15 minutes and then you get out and then you get another 15 minutes. So it wasn't too, too long. Yeah. Um, so you get some time in and th time out, and then when you find another pod, you do it again. So I think we did find two yeah. pods, so we did it twice yeah. that amount. So, we definitely yeah. didn't feel short changed, though. We no. didn't feel like it was too little because actually, when you're in the water and you see it all happening, it, it feels like it's a lot longer than yeah, it yeah, yeah. than it is. Yeah, absolutely, that's for sure. Yeah, so it definitely is plenty enough of time. I know what I'm saying right now doesn't seem like a lot, but it definitely is plenty yeah. of time. And they do have those time restrictions more because they don't want to disturb the dolphins for too long either. So it's kind of a way to be a little more, um, you know, ethical toward the dolphins too. Adrian says, do you have a video on New Zealand slang or saying that people should know when visiting? Yes, we do actually. Uh, there is a video of that. So I think you just type slang um and uh, you know in the search bar of the channel uh, or you type slang and then nz pocket guide you should be able to find it and we also do have an article on that on nzpocketguide.com so yes we do uh michael says arthur pass is a great drive through a lot of places to stop over and see oamaru for the old victorian precinct and get to watch the penguin walking around at night as yes. they come out so here two more suggestions for you courtney uh, Karin Alami says, I love the answer. I'm, fur I'm uh, uh, fond of the plants, specifically from the native land with tags with all the information. The doc does that very well. Michael Marino says, Aloha, and a ton of emoji. He comes just around the end. Um, 
Michael Connell says, great weekend. See you all next week. See you all next week. Jonathan Vincent says, thanks all. Great week. Have a great week, Jonathan. And Martina says, looking forward to see you guys next week. Stay safe. Stay safe, Martina. Thank you for popping in. And Adrienne, thanks for all the great work you to do. Stay safe and see you next week. Thank you, Adrienne. Yes, see you next you. week. Bye-bye. Are you not waving today? Not saying bye-bye? Stay safe, all. Stay safe. <laughs>